right, let's try this again. Time for Toy Tuesday at a seven, a little after seven now, uh, Central Standard Time, Tuesday evening, March 30th. Got some super cool stuff for Toy Tuesday tonight. We'll see if we can get through it this time and uh, see if we can make it work. But uh, had a bunch of you on. We just lost the connection, so we'll try it again. But anyway, we'll get back into our topic about designers. Obviously, we talked a lot about Billy Mitchell and his career with GM on the Sunday Night Live chat. And then we got into, uh, we talked a little bit about Gordon Burig, and obviously learned a lot about Gordon Burig on our trip to the Auburn Court Duesenberg factory in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, a few weeks ago. Gordon Beard was a very interesting designer, and um, hopefully, yep, Ironhead, we're back. Uh, I don't know, I, for some reason, call forwarding will not turn on on my phone tonight, and somebody just kept calling and calling and calling. About the third time, they finally knocked the feed out, so um, they wouldn't quit calling until they knocked us off, but they finally got it done, I guess. Um, and I can't get, and for some reason, call forwarding will not set up on my phone tonight, and I don't know why it won't do that, but it just sits there and scrolls and won't let me set it. So we're going to roll with it, and hopefully we'll get through her now. And we'll get back into our conversation about Gordon Burig. You know, a, a very interesting, very famous designer. Did a lot of cool stuff. Started his career with Packard and General Motors and even Stutz. And he was he was even heavily involved in the design of the Stutz Blackhawks. So, um, and then he went to work for, for Duesenberg and then ended up working with, uh, you know, it was an instrumental in the Model J Duesenberg. And then ended up going to work for Auburn in the mid-30s. Um, one of the cars... There's, a, there's actually several cars he's very well known for, but one of the cars he's extremely well known for. Yeah, Chris, we're back. We had somebody kept calling me and call forwarding will not set up on my phone tonight. And they called and called and called and finally knocked us off about the third time. So uh, I keep trying to, I've tried to set call forwarding about four times tonight and it won't set. So we're going to, hopefully we can get through her this time. But uh, the, uh, you know, not only was he involved in the, the boat tail speedster Auburn's in 35, he was, Involved in the the iconic uh, cord 810, 812, commonly known as the coffin nose cord. Um, so I mean, some absolutely iconic cars that he had his hands in, and uh, and actually then after the you know the Auburn Cord Duesenberg company went bankrupt, he actually went to work for Ford in the late 40s. He was involved in the the 51 Ford Victoria, the 56 Lincoln Mark II. Once again, some iconic cars for Ford that he was very instrumental into in developing those designs into cars that today are still iconic um he actually re he retired in the mid 60s and then he taught uh for several years at an, at, an, at an art college for design because obviously he did some pretty cool stuff with design and he was actually uh nominated for uh, for one of the top 25 automotive designers of the century he didn't win but he was he was in that elite group that was nominated as, as some of the top designers of the entire century. And uh, he, he passed away in 1990, so he lived a long storied career. And uh, we've got some cool stuff we're going to look at tonight. And, and one piece is just just amazing. I've, I can't thank our new friend Doug Prey at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Company enough for even not only considering selling me this piece, but then actually selling me this piece to allow me to add it to my collection. So I'm really excited about that. Some of the stuff in, in his designs, even today, are kind of timeless. So we're going to look at a few pieces of modern pieces to show how popular his designs still are. And then we'll get to this super awesome, cool piece that I really love. So as always, questions, comments, throw them up there. We'll sure try to get to them as we move through this. But we'll flip the camera around. And we're going to look here at just a couple of more modern pieces. You know, Hot Wheels Legends series number three, which was the 1930s Auburn Speedsters. You know, it came with a little Hot Wheel of the Speedster and everything in it. So, I mean, even in today's world, these designs are iconic. Had his own Hot Wheel made for him. And a Legends series of Gordon Burig with a coffin nose cord in the Hot Wheels pack, part of the package of one of his most iconic designs. So, you know, a little bit of information about him on the back. So it's pretty cool when you get your own, not your, not only one of your designs as a toy, but actually recognized as a legend in the industry. And, and that put in there with a piece of, a, you know, one of your designs along with your picture for, for the masses. Now, what am I excited about? Obviously, these are Hot Wheels. These are cool. We can pick these up anywhere. They are available. Some of this stuff, you know, some of these were limited edition sets and limited edition series. 
and things like that. You know, here's a here's another classic chord, Hot Wheel in a limited edition series. But this stuff is available. I mean, you can find this. You can get online. You can buy your own pieces of these and check some of this stuff out. Now, the next piece we're going to get to, I don't think you can buy anywhere. This is a tracing of the original blueprint for the 1935 supercharged Auburn Boattail Speedster. Now, this is not the original. It is old. I mean, you can tell by the paper it is old, it is brown, it is yellowed. And as we studied this, you have to bear with the reflection off the lights here in the shop. Um, but this isn't the original. So we did a little bit of looking down here in the corner, and I hope this guy this shows up. I hope you guys can see this. It's going to be kind of tough to read as long as the camera will focus. Traced by Burig, and it looks like August 24th, 1957. So what this appears to be is a tracing off of his original blueprint, probably done for a friend. Doug said he may have even done it for his dad, Glenn Prey, because Glenn Prey and Gordon Burig were good friends. We talked about that a lot in the last video we did with Doug. Uh, about how they were, you know, they were such good friends that when Gordon Burig was in town, he stayed at the Prey's house. In fact, Doug said he usually got kicked out of his bedroom, so Gordon had a place to sleep. But as we look at this, it's a tracing, and I assume you know it's got to be an original tracing, or he wouldn't have put his name on it and stated that he did it off of the original blueprints. If we look at the side profile of the car, we do see some dimensions. We do see some things you know, where the where the top was you know kind of shadowed in since it was a convertible. We show the center points, shows the design of the seat even in there, and even has the supercharged emblem sketched in for the emblem on the hood, all the way down to the detail of the hood ornament. It shows a top view, a half of a top view of the car. You know, and this was, you know, prior to computers, prior to CAD, this was, this was drafting table, rulers, straight edges. Shows a half of the nose with some of the dimensions on it. All the way down to even some of the slats and the grills. Shows the body line, the windshield frame. And then, the last piece of this sketch or, or tracing of the original is the actual boat tail part of it. That's right, Ironhead says, even cool, now we can build one. Actually, you can buy a brand new one. They are, they are getting ready, to, the Auburn company is getting ready to make a run of new ones. All steel, 35 Auburn boat tail speedsters. But, you know, if you look at this half section of the rear, you can see where the top is kind of lightly stenciled in as being up. Even shows the tires. And just an iconic piece of an iconic car. Like I said, I don't have anything else to go on on this piece other than the fact that it says traced by Burig. Now, you know, where it came from and where I got it and the story behind this piece is, you know, to me, it's epic. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful cars ever designed, an iconic car, an extremely well-known car, and to see what they did. I mean, like I said, this is, you know, traced by Burig. This had to have been done off of the original blueprints. So pretty cool piece, pretty iconic, and I honestly can't believe that I own it. It's just, it's just something you don't hear of. It's not the original artwork, but it is from the original artwork, done by the original designer who did the original artwork. So I don't know what kind of category that falls under. Um, you know, it's not really a print. It's not really a copy um, because it was done by the original guy off of his original stuff. So thanks, Ironhead. You like it too. It's a, it is a great piece. And it to me, it's amazing. Uh, like I said, I can't thank Doug enough. You know, I was shocked that he considered selling it. And after we talked about it a while, he did agree to sell it to me. And I'm just ecstatic about it um it's it's pretty amazing and for me you know i obviously i'm a big gearhead and we have a lot of memorabilia 
Yeah, no, it, it, is, it is better than a copy because it was done by the original artist from what I can tell. Obviously, we, we, you know, I've got a lot of memorabilia and a, and a pretty good sized collection of memorabilia. So, you know, some of the stuff to me, it gets to be kind of run of the mill type thing. You know, some things I get kind of jaded about, um, but I still get excited about it. But to add something like this, you know, to my collection and, and what, what me and my daughter have put together with, with our collection of memorabilia and automobilia stuff, it's pieces like this that are just so iconic. You're talking about an iconic car, a legendary designer, and, and a piece that, that his hands touched, you know. And, you know, like I said, it was probably done for a friend. And like Doug said, maybe he may have even done it for his dad, Glenn, you know, in, back in the late 50s. Uh, and it could because he wanted a copy of it. And obviously he didn't want to give up the original. So he traced one for him and put his name right on it. But uh, anyway, that's what I have for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, definitely something a little bit different. Um, something you don't see very often because there's only probably, you know, maybe he did a couple of those. Maybe the original is still out there somewhere. We don't know. Um, but for me, for, for a gearhead to have an iconic piece from an iconic designer of an iconic car, um, to where there's, like I said, maybe a couple of them in existence. I was, I was super excited about it and just stoked to have it. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys like checking it out and, uh, and, and hope you guys appreciate it as much as I do. Cause I'm obviously excited about it, but, uh, that's what I've got for you tonight. So we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap up. Uh, if you got any other comments or questions, go ahead and throw them up there as we wrap up. We'll sure try to get to them. If not, uh, another video coming out tomorrow night on the 66 Buick Riviera that I picked up a few weeks ago that is in pieces. It was dismantled. The restoration uh, began, and then uh, life got in the way. That's right, Dan. That's probably about as close as the original drawing as I'm, as, as I'm ever going to get. So, uh, But there again, that's why I get so excited about this stuff. Um, to some people, it may not be that big a deal, but... To a gearhead like me, and I hope like a lot of you guys, I just get so excited about it. So, but yeah, stay tuned. We'll check out the '66 Riviera tomorrow. I kind of unloaded the car and uh, laid most of the stuff out where we can get a pretty good idea of what is there. Um, still got some wind noise uh, on it. Um, you know, my fuzzy cat. Even like if you guys caught the video last night, my fuzzy cat on the microphone that's supposed to help take care of wind still wasn't enough. We still had a lot of wind noise, but. That, uh, that sock just still doesn't do everything it needs to do because we're in Kansas and we get wind and there isn't much you can do about it. Uh, I did those videos Sunday when we had some wind, which I'm glad I did because the last couple of days, believe it or not, have actually been worse. Yesterday, we had gusts of over 50 miles an hour, so it, uh, it definitely didn't get any better. So I'm glad I got what I got. So the 66 Riviera video will be coming out tomorrow night, and uh, you can check that car out a little bit better. Uh, thanks Ironhead. It, it, it is a great piece of history to have. And that's why I get, so I kind of geek out about this stuff. So, <laughs> but, uh, I think Friday night we'll have some more stuff from Doug Prey and the Auburn Court Duesenberg factory. <laughs> Sleep with it under my pillow. I, I probably would, Dan. I mean, it, I'm that excited about it because it's just such a great piece. So I'm uh, glad you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, we'll get those other videos up here later this week. Um, stay tuned Sunday night, um, badge raffle, giving away that badge collection to the, whoever gets their name drawn out of the big Buick can. If you, if you're not, yeah, Ironhead Garage says he'd sleep with it under his pillow. That's, like I said, that's, but that's why we're here guys. Cause we geek out about this stuff because it's so great. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm appreciative. I'm excited that Doug agreed to sell it to me, uh, because it is just a, such a great piece to add to the collection. But, uh, if you're not in on the badge raffle, be sure to get in. You can PayPal me or be pretty tight to get me a check on the way, uh, but you can still PayPal me at cse3 at cox.net. For the badge raffle, we're going to draw that Sunday night, and then we're going to announce the new raffle for next month. It's got some, a couple of super cool pieces lined up for that, so you don't want to miss that either. So That's what we've got going on for the rest of the week. As always, thanks for stopping by. appreciate you hanging out, spending a few minutes with us, checking out what we've got going on and, uh, and hanging out. So... It's, uh, it's always great to hang on with a bunch of car guys, and car guys and gals. Have a good time. Check it out and enjoy some of this stuff. So, as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate you being here. A uh, couple more comments popping up. Jim, uh, it, thanks. It is a really great piece of history. Uh, the 68 winter issue of Automobile Quarterly had Glenn Prey in it. Um, so, I just, there was a, that and I missed another comment. They, they faded out on me too quick. I apologize, guys. I didn't catch all of that stuff, but... Uh, um, 
we'll sure try if anything else pops up here real quick real quick i'll try to catch it before we bail off but uh anyway that's what i have for tonight glad you guys enjoyed it glad you guys are as excited about it as i am um like i said i, I geek out about this stuff that especially the, the different stuff that you know isn't mass produced that you can't always get everywhere so that's why i love it and that's why i enjoy it and i'm glad you guys enjoy it and, and hang out with us as well so stay tuned more cool stuff coming up be sure to check out the rest of the videos this week and hope to see you sunday night let's give those badges away to somebody and uh and announce the next drawing so we will see you then thanks for stopping by and uh, enjoy your evening and hope to see you tomorrow night on the next video thanks for watching everybody